Right guys, welcome back to some more A-level psychology essay practice. In this video, I'm gonna be focusing on the models of memory. For anyone who's sitting the 2022 exam, this is probably the last paper one video I'm gonna get a chance to upload before the exam, so I hope it's useful. I've got five essays for you in this video, two regular 16 markers, two application essays, and then a sneaky combination essay that one of my students asked me about today and I hadn't really considered before now, but it did get me thinking. As normal, I'll give you the title, followed by a brief plan of the essay. And of course, you can pause the video after the titles or after the plans to try and write them for yourself. I've put the chapter links in the description below so you can jump to a particular essay if you want. And finally, before I get started, please, if you find this video useful, let me know by hitting the like button. So, this is my first essay. It's a nice straightforward question on the multi-store model. Remember, before we have a look at the plan, the lesson on coding capacity and duration makes up part of the multi-store model and should definitely get a mention in this essay. So here's the plan. I'm gonna have a little introduction to the essay and then I'm gonna talk about each individual store and give some details on them. My evaluation section is mainly limitations because the multi-store model isn't great overall, but there is one strength in there. Remember to use your keywords in the outline. The stores are separate, and they are unitary, and they each have their own individual characteristics in terms of coding, capacity, and duration. And like I said before, those things should definitely get a mention in some form or another. So here's the essay. As you can see, there's a fairly short outline, simply because there's just not that much to say in an outline for this topic. And then you can see my one strength followed by my three limitations. Just to be clear as well, the one strength doesn't have to be badly study on coding. You can talk about duration studies with Peterson and Peterson and Barrick, which shows that the duration of short-term memory and long-term memory is distinctly different. And there are also other strengths that you can use that will come up potentially in whatever resource you're using. Okay, this is just one way to do it. So moving on, this is essay number two. It's an application essay that came up in a paper one a couple of years ago. So as you can see, the outline and evaluation sections are largely the same as the last essay, except I've cut out one evaluation point. We've also got the application section in green and I've popped some notes down on how the scenario links to the STEM. Importantly here, we've got a lot of information that links to the capacity of short-term memory. Four digits is within the capacity of short-term memory, which is why we can remember pin numbers quite easily whereas 11 digits isn't within capacity of short-term memory, which means that we need maintenance rehearsal to remember it, or at least to pass it on to long-term memory. Okay, so that's the kind of thing that you're gonna be expected to talk about for this essay. Okay, and this is what it would look like. There's my outline. Then you've got the application section in green, followed by the three evaluation points. Okay, moving on, this is essay number three. Again, it is a simple 16 marker, this time on the working memory model. So on the left, you can see my plan for the outline. I'm gonna do a little intro and give an overview of the model. I'm then gonna go through all the stores, name them, and talk about what their function is. Remember, very importantly, each store has a limited capacity and has a unique way of coding. Mark schemes very often make reference to that, so make sure you get something about that into your outline. For example, the phonological loop codes acoustically, whereas the visual spatial sketchpad codes visually, and they both have a limited capacity. The evaluation points are also fairly straightforward. Again, there's mainly limitations, but there is one support, which is Baddeley's dual task studies, and that's gonna be an important point to put in because as a piece of research, that is fairly important for the working memory model. 
Okay, and here is the essay. So you've got my outline. It's definitely longer than the outline for the multi-store model, but that's simply because there's more to say. And then you've got my one strength and my three limitations. Okay, remember when you're talking about models of memory, you often end up using case studies to evaluate. So using a counterpoint to evaluate the use of case studies is often a nice way to get an extra evaluation point. Okay, so you can see that counterpoint there in orange. So, essay number four. This is a new scenario that you probably won't have seen before, and that's because I made it up because I couldn't find an application essay in a past paper that I liked. It's a straightforward scenario that plays on the fact that the slave systems have a limited capacity and we can't multitask if the same system is being used. As always, I've kept my outline the same as in the standard essay. Like I said earlier, the application is going to focus on the fact that both stores in question have a limited capacity, and so they can complete one task, but not two. Okay, so in this case, when Ben is doing his art portfolio, he's using his Visual Spatial Sketchpad, and he's listening to music using the phonological loop. Both have got limited capacity, but they can do their individual tasks. But when he's then revising psychology, it's mainly verbal, which means that he can't listen to his music at the same time because the phonological loop can't do two tasks at once due to the limited capacity. I'm also using the same evaluation points as I used in my standard essay, just in a slightly different combination. Okay, and here is the essay. So you've got my outline with my application bit in green and then you've got the three evaluation points. Right, and here is the final essay. The one that I hadn't thought of, but luckily my student did, and if this essay comes up in the paper, all credit for it appearing in this video is definitely gonna go to her. So, when you write something like this, you have to be very careful, because it's going to be really easy to just go ahead and write like 300 words for your outline. And then all of a sudden you realize that you've used up all your time before you even get to your evaluation section. So this is very much an exercise in condensing. You have to take a lot of the detail out whilst still keeping enough of the detail in to show the examiner that you know your stuff. So I'm going to be giving lots of breadth in my essay. So as you can see from my outline, I'm going to be naming all of the stores in both of the models, but I'm going to reserve my depth for only some of the stores, definitely not all of them. Okay, each of the models is also going to get a little bit of an introduction so that we have an overview of what the model is all about. Okay, my evaluation points are of course going to be a mix of the multi-store model and the working memory model and they are going to appear exactly as they do in my plan because there is a nice link there that you can make between the two models, which I will point out for you in a sec. So, here's the essay. As you can see, I've gone for an outline, evaluate, outline, evaluate model. The reason I've done that is because there's a really nice link with the evaluation point about KF which is the evaluation point in yellow. It's a limitation of the multi-store model, but it's a strength of the working memory model. So that means that I've used it as a little bridge between the two models, because I've talked about KF as a limitation of the multi-store model, and then I've used that evaluation point to introduce the working memory model as a model that came about to deal with some of the problems aimed at the multi-store model. Okay, so you can see that in my first sentence of the working memory model outline, where I talk about some of the criticisms that were aimed at the multi-store model. You'll probably notice that my multi-store model outline is much shorter than my working memory model outline. It doesn't matter. I feel like I've captured everything that I need to capture, and the outline in total is still around 200 words long. So it's still at the top end of what an outline really should be. Okay, any more detail and you start running the risk of writing too much and then potentially running out of time. Obviously, if you are somebody who writes very quickly, then you can put in as much detail as you want. Just be aware of your timings. 
Okay, like I said before, you don't want to run out of time. This essay is one of those ones where you need to stop and think before you start writing because you could very easily get lost in the content. Okay, but once you have a bit of a plan, it's actually quite a nice essay to write. You just got to make sure that you're cutting down the content to capture the essentials without losing too much of the detail. So that was the bonus essay. We'll see if it comes up or not. And that is the end of the video. I hope it's all made sense. Keep practicing your essays because they always make up a lot of marks in the exams. If you've got any questions, please stick them in the comment section below and I will do my best to get back to you ASAP. And if you are sitting paper one 2022 tomorrow, then I wish you the best of luck. Don't panic. I'm sure you're going to smash it. I hope the videos have been useful. Thanks for listening and I will see you in the next one.